Well, Victoria has recorded 723 new coronavirus infections and 13 deaths. At least 10 of them linked to aged care. The new record comes a week after masks became mandatory in Melbourne and the Mitchell Shire and three weeks after lockdowns were reinstated. Many are concerned about the state's testing regime after reports of lengthy delays in obtaining test results and a series of failures found in contract tracing. The state's Shadow Minister for Health, Georgie Crozier, says today's surge in cases shows there's serious concerns in the testing regime. She joins me now. Georgie, take us through your concerns with the testing regimes right now. Oh, thanks very much, Peter. Well, the testing regimes have been really quite shambolic from the word go, but we've got some serious concerns in how our testing regime has been undertaken in Victoria, but the contact tracing that you mentioned, it has been catastrophic because to get on top of this virus, you need to actually um, uh, follow up every case every day. And in Victoria, that just hasn't been happening. And as a result, after the hotel quarantine breaches, we've got this massive community transmission right across our state now and a further six um, local government areas the Geelong, around the Geelong area uh, is now having further restrictions placed on them. Of course, Melbourne and the Greater Mitchell Shire have been, um, have been in lockdown. We've been in lockdown uh, for, for some time and we've all had mandatory masks. Well, mandatory masks are going to be statewide as of Sunday night. So very concerning about how the government has handled this whole COVID-19 response, um, but the contact tracing has been really, really uh, dreadful. And as a result, we've got this widespread transmission occurring. Georgie, I think it's been pretty ordinary that Daniel Andrews has tried to, you know, use the blame game when it comes to this aged care fiasco. And, and, and I mean, you know, I know, know Greg Hunt, Federal Health Minister, uh, reiterated the point early in the week that this whole issue, the problem in Victoria, comes back to the fiasco attached to the mm. hotel quarantine protocols being breached. But, uh, I mean, we know there's tensions behind the scenes between the Prime Minister and Daniel Andrews, but I think this is just a real symptom of the way in which this Victorian Labor government do their business. Well, Peter, you talk about the tensions, the tensions in the department, the tensions between the Health Minister and the Premier are all being spoken about, you know, in in media circles. So there are huge tensions because they know they've got it wrong. They know they've absolutely bungled this. And as a result, we've got these terrible situations occurring where people are losing their lives, people are losing their livelihoods, people are really fearing for what is going to happen. They don't have confidence in Daniel Andrews. His comments on Tuesday around the aged care, I think, were so insulting to all of those people that work in aged care. Um, and for people who've got their loved ones in in some of these aged care facilities, they don't have any choice. That's their mothers and fathers and their loved ones that are in these facilities. And I think it was just a real demonstration of, of how the government is operating and just how um, unnecessary when we're really worried about where we are in Victoria. And as we see these enormous numbers today and the terrible numbers of deaths and just the situation that doesn't have any Real ha the, the government doesn't have any handle of it, you know, and the confidence that has been zapped out of Victorians, I think, is is becoming very, very evident now. And Georgie, as most Victorians try and do the right thing, you've now got these ratbags, these conspiracy theorists, who are turning up to Bunnings without masks and you know attacking police. Uh, we saw today the arrest of one of the uh, uh, one of the ring leaders of this mob, a woman called Eve Black. Who, uh, who was the one who got through that border check and, and sort of mocked the police. You must be frustrated as the, as the alternative health minister in Victoria. You must look at these people and go, you guys need to get your act together. We just don't need this behaviour. It's just idiotic. The police are doing everything they can. Our, everybody involved, you know, the healthcare workers, those people in aged care, our paramedics, everybody is trying their best to assist the entire state. And you've got people like this who are flouting the rules, being quite obnoxious, quite and quite frankly, it's just so idiotic, it's just ridiculous. So I was pleased that the you know police had caught up with that woman and really took her to task. And uh, honestly, it's just insulting to every Victorian who are looking around with what we're facing with these huge numbers 
with so many people that are actually losing their lives. We're losing their lives because this community transmission is so big. It's got into our aged care facilities and, and people are losing their livelihoods. So these idiots need to just honestly settle down and please just do the right thing because we've got to get out of this pandemic. We've, everybody wants to get out of it. And this sort of behaviour is not helping anyone. Georgie, I want to ask you about the mood in Victoria because, uh, you know, I saw a Vox pop earlier on Peter Credlin's show and people are genuinely not just fearful but apprehensive about what's ahead and there are some mm -hmm. leading e epidemiologists who are saying that, uh, you know, another three weeks of this lockdown, it will be much, much longer than that. What are you, what's the sense on the ground right now in Victoria? Well, I didn't see um, Peter's show, unfortunately, but I think that's right. I think that's exactly what the feeling is. There is... And people were angry at the start, but there's this despair that is setting in. They don't have confidence in the leadership of the government because they can just see these monumental mistakes the whole time and they can see the far-reaching consequences of those mistakes and they can't see any way out of it. There's, they just don't feel that, goodness, are we going to be out of this in three weeks? How long is this going to take? So there's so much uncertainty. There is that fear that you speak of. There's real apprehension. And there is just real confusion because we've got so many mixed messages going around and so many different rules applying right across the state. You know, one part of the Victoria and the regions are free to, to go about or they'll have to wear masks on, on as of Sunday night. But uh, the Geelong area, well, they can uh, not have visitors at home, but they can go down to a cafe and see their friends. Whereas we in Melbourne and the Mitchell Shire, we're in, in, in full lockdown. We can't leave our suburbs. Mm -hmm. So there is just this huge sort of dis disarray, if you like, of a whole range of things that are coming out of government and the confusion and the uncertainty is certainly there, but there's certainly worse than that. There is real despair setting in and, and the confidence is, is, I think, declining every single day. Well, stay safe, Georgie Crozier. Thanks for joining us on Sky News Across Australia tonight. Thank you very much, Peter. You too. Thank you, everyone.